welcome to everyone who has joined this research highlights session on day two of our symposium, Salzburg Digital Health and Prevention Days 2022, hosted by the Ludwig Boltzmann Institute for Digital Health and Prevention in Salzburg, Austria. The topic of this session is patient involvement in research. We look forward to the keynote talk, which will be given by Dr. Rona Smith, who is medical director of the patient-led research hub in Cambridge, United Kingdom. And before Dr. Smith's talk, my colleagues Veronika Leitner and Isabel Höppchen will offer some of their personal experiences and reflections on patient involvement in their work here at our institute. And I will start us off with a very brief and basic introduction to the topic of patient involvement for those in the audience who are perhaps less familiar with the concept or who perhaps never heard of patient involvement in research. We will have a brief um, opportunity for questions after Veronica and Isabel's talk, and then some more time for questions and discussion at the very end of the session. I would ask the audience to please write your questions in the chat, and I will then read out questions to our speakers from the chat. Also at this point, um, may I briefly signpost you to firstly, our digital health idea competition for young researchers or early career researchers, which uh, uh, will kick off um, also during this um, Salzburg Digital Health and Prevention Week on Friday. Registration is still open and you can find all the details on our website uh, here. The link is here at the bottom of this slide and I have also put the link uh, in the chat. And secondly, um, if you allow me to highlight that we have opened a call for papers for a special issue in the journal Frontiers in Digital Health. The scope for this special issue relates to our work at the Ludwig Boltzmann Institute. So on behalf of my colleagues who are guest editing the issue, I would like to, like to extend this invitation to submit to anybody in the audience who might be interested in this. Here as well, uh, you can see the link at the bottom of this slide, and I have also put the link in the chat. So let me now uh, give you a brief introduction into patient and public involvement in research. Uh, what is this? When we're talking about this type of research, we're talking about research which is co-produced with patients, carers, or members of the public. Patient involvement in this context is not about being a research participant, answering surveys, or being an interviewee. It encompasses setting research priorities, defining research questions and outcome measures, providing input into study design and conduct, dissemination of results and evaluation. So patient involvement refers to uh, actual involvement in the doing of the research. What you have here is a definition given by the British Medical Journal, um, uh, one of the internationally leading medical journals, which is uh, championing uh, the patient involvement approach. And for example, um, they include a mandatory section on reporting patient involvement in their author guidelines. Why should we involve patients or members of the public in research? There are three main uh, lines of argumentation. There is a moral or ethical dimension. People who are living with a certain health condition should also have a voice in the related research. Uh, it is the right thing to do. The second argumentation is the methodological dimension. Patient involvement leads to greater relevance of research proposals and better study designs. So this uh, relates to uh, 
bringing research questions uh, into the focus together with uh, involvement from by patients or designing study designs together with patients in order to um, study more relevant research questions or in order to improve uh, study design processes, for example, make them more patient friendly to increase recruitment and retention. And the third argumentation is a political dimension along the lines that alliances between researchers, patients and the public benefit the research, for example, in the organization and logistics of running uh, clinical research and implementing research findings uh, into practice. There seems to be one issue at the core of patient involvement, and that is the level of involvement. Um, essentially, the distribution of influence and power in the research is what this comes down to. So if we think of this uh, along a spectrum um, from, on the one hand, researchers holding all the control and power in the research, and on the other hand, patients and members of the public, um, we can conceptualize this um, along a, a sort of sliding scale where at the very far end, there is no involvement. And this is typically traditionally um, what has been happening in research. Um, patients are recruited as research participants. Um, they are there to provide their data, but they have no influence or power in the research. But once we start involving patients and members of the public, uh, we can give over different levels of control. So at the lowest level, uh, we can consult patients this might, for example, be a discussion group where I, as a researcher, run my research idea by a group of patients to see what their feedback would be on the research idea. At the next uh, greater level, uh, we can involve patients in a collaborative manner. Um, so this would be patients actually taking over activities as part of the research process. This could include preparation of study materials, conducting data collections such as interviews, um, or su supporting the analysis of research data. And then at the greatest level, uh, there is the control. Um, so this could be a scenario where a patient organization, for example, funds and commissions a piece of research or employs the researchers to do the research that they would like to carry out. And uh, my last slide for this brief introduction is just to give you uh, a bit of uh, an insight how we at our Ludwig Boltzmann Institute have tried to um, set up strategies at each of these levels of involvement um, to authentically live and do patient involvement in our research. Um, so of course, at the level of no involvement, we do conduct research studies to which we recruit patients who are research participants and are not involved in that research in, in the sense of the PPI concept. Um, but we have a strategy at each of these involvement levels. So at the level of consultation, we have set up um, a reference group of patients or experts by experience is a term that we like to use. Uh, this group has grown in the past three years to over 50 patients. It is a network for us um, of patients who are happy to be contacted whenever we have a consultation activity uh, where we are looking for patients to give us their input, which could be giving feedback on an app, for example, uh, in a, in a uh, discussion format, or for example, um, proofreading a piece of written material such as a patient information sheet. At the collaboration level, uh, we have established a patient researcher position. So this is an actual part-time employment um, at a research assistant level. And part of the job description, part of the requirements was that the applicant had to have a cardiovascular condition themselves. Uh, 
Um, and so um, we were very fortunate to be able to recruit our colleague, Veronika Leitner, who you will meet uh, in a moment, um, who is supporting our work um, and working together with us as, as a research assistant uh, on that level. And lastly, on the level of control, um, our institute um, is uh, reviewed and critiqued once a year by uh, a panel of scientific advisors, international scientific advisors. And uh, as part of this six person scientific advisory board, there's also one expert by a period experience appointed um, at that level who joins in that um, high level peer review and scientific critique of our work. So that's uh, um, one strategy at the level of control. And lastly, um, uh, if you'll allow me, I will signpost you to uh, one of our publications um, here at the bottom of the slide, if you're interested to read a little more into how um, we do patient and public involvement here at our, at our institute and our experiences and also challenges um, in introducing this approach uh, in our research community, which um, does not have such an established uh, tradition of patient involvement in research, um, then this might be a publication uh, that could be of interest to you. Hey. Um, now, um, I would like to hand over to my colleagues, Isabel Höppchen and Veronika Leitner, and I would ask the vendor um, to change uh, the focus view to bring Veronika and Isabel into the focus of the uh, presentation. Um, and uh, it is my pleasure to introduce uh, their talk. They will uh, say a little more about the backgrounds um, and the roles here at the Institute themselves. Um, so uh, over to you, Veronica and Isabel, the floor is yours. Yeah, thank you, Tino, for the nice uh, introduction. I hope you can hear me properly. Um, good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to our talk. Within the next 15 minutes, we would like to share our thoughts and our experiences with patient and public involvement in science. My name is Isabel Höppchen and I'm a trained physiotherapist with five years of clinical experience in different healthcare settings, mainly involved in the treatment of persons with orthopedic disorders and trauma injuries. And I also hold a master's degree in health services research and implementation science at Heidelberg University. And since summer 2021, I'm a PhD student in human computer interaction here at the LBI in Salzburg. And now I would like to introduce my colleague, Veronika Leitner. Good afternoon, everybody from my side. My name is Veronika Leitner. Uh, I am a nurse since the year 2000. You can see it on the picture in the middle. I studied at the Johannes Kepler Universität, University in Linz Nursing Education, and I graduated my bachelor degree at Wohnst Nursing Practice at the University of Applied Science at the IMC Krems. I took a different nursing experience on different medical fields. Now I work on a ward with neurologic diseases with focus on stroke acute care and rehabilitation. And I'm teaching in different nursing schools and universities of applied science since 2003. And I work at the Ludwig Boltzmann Institute Salzburg since January this year. Well, um, the main function in my work here at the LBI Salzburg is the integration of patient experience in science for people with cardiovascular diseases. I suffered from a heart attack in January last year. A blood clot interrupted the circulation. Uh, you can see it in the picture in the middle. And uh, so I got experiences about the time in hospital at the intensive care unit. You can have a look on the picture on the left side. Uh, my time and the patient ward, the cardiologic rehabilitation, and I already have experiences 
to be a heart patient and to live with a heart disease. And when I started this job in January uh, this year, I didn't know exactly about my work here at the LBI. Um, I have never heard anything about a uh, public patient in Wolfman. And so I, I didn't know uh, what to expect and that they wanted to offer me a job. And uh, the, the story went like this. Um, I created an education concept uh, for the cardiologic uh, rehabilitation center in Linz. And the manager asked me if I'm interested in working for the LBI Salzburg because they are looking for a heart patient. And I only knew that the LBI is working reputable in research. And so I was curious. And now I'm here. Isabel, would you like to describe your work at the LBI Salzburg? Yeah, sure, Roni. So the overarching aim of my PhD project is to design a digital prototype to support patients' pathway to cardiac rehab. And the topic is settled at the intersection between cardiac acute care and rehab. So I explore how digital interventions can support patients after cardiac event. And to achieve this, I reviewed the scientific literature and also did a contextual inquiry to gain some further insights in the clinical infrastructure and to learn how patients are referred to cardiac rehab and also to collect the stakeholders' perspectives on this. The methods I mainly applied were interviews and observations, what means that I had the opportunity to shadow clinicians during their daily workflow. And I also did a focus group with cardiac patients, as you can see on the picture. And now my next step is to conduct interdisciplinary participatory design workshops with people with cardiovascular diseases and their relatives, but also clinicians, researchers, software developers and designers. And the aim of this workshop is to understand the stakeholders' needs regarding the referral process to cardiac rehab and also to explore to what extent a digital prototype could address their needs. Until my employment here at the LBI, I had no experiences with PPI. Also, it was not part of my studies or in any other employment so far. And therefore, the workshops will be my first touch point with PPI. And regarding this, I will be responsible for everything related to planning and executing, for example, the ethics road, recruiting participants, designing flyers and information sheets, and also finding an appropriate location, and of course, planning the content and methods. And I noticed that within PPI, there is a clear difference to my role as a researcher in other projects. And I really have the ambition to show participants that science is not something rather isolated and reserved for researchers only, but it's that it's possible to change priority setting by contributing personal experiences and also needs. And for example, I reflect my way in communicating a lot more when I talk to potential participants, especially when they are patients. And I want to express myself in such a way that they feel welcomed and not discouraged. And I really wish them to feel valued as experts and that their experiences are appreciated. What about you, Voni? Do you have any experience with PPI so far? Well, the main task is to bring the patient experiences in the scientific work. Uh, my experiences uh, support the preparation of further studies, for example, helping creating questionnaires or helping to create apps uh, to support a healthy lifestyle for people who suffer from cardiovascular and heart disease. And I participate uh, where my expertise is needed. For example, one important part is to help to recruit patients for interviews or workshops. And that is very important. I, as a patient, I'm on eye level uh, with the researcher because I feel that my opinion and my perspective um, is heard. And it's very important, I think. 
So now let's reflect on our expectations, aims, and motives regarding PPI. Why am I curious about involving stakeholders in my research and why is it so important to me? So first of all, I would like to give them a voice by giving them the opportunity to share their personal experiences and also to conclude their expertise in the development of health applications. Also, I want to open up science to lay people because in my opinion, it's a modern approach which fits quite well into the concept of patient-centered care and shared decision-making. And another point is that I want to keep uh, in touch with clinical practice. And Froni, do you remember when I approached you with the great idea to send rehabil rehabilitation referrals easily per email? Oh, yes, I remember. You expected that you can send a rehabilitation referral per mail. And I told you, you can only send it by fax in practice. Yes, so the insights into the clinical workflows always keep me down on earth and help me to keep an eye on the context and users' needs. I also reflected on how I would like to behave in the workshops, and I think I want to be open by listening to participants' ideas and also care for their well-being during the workshops, because I find it important to create an inspiring and welcoming atmosphere so that everyone feels comfortable. And I also would like to work with participants in a team, like in a partnership. I wish to credibly convey participants that they are a part of a team and not used as guinea pigs. But at the same time, I ask myself how I manage to not overburden the workshop participants. And I also wonder which methods might be appropriate to inspire them and how to find a common language. And finally, I think the best feedback I could get from participants would be when they say after the workshop that was really fun and great and I want to participate in something like this again. Uni, what are your expectations? Um, well, sometimes when I see health informations, I think that they are developed by someone who has no or not enough experience with the disease. For example, um, my fellow patients at the cardiac rehabilitation center needed a translation for medical terms. And um, at this time, um, I explained this med medical terms to them. But at this time, I realized that the peer support is very important to plan rehabilitation steps um, and they are also very useful uh, to motivate each other to doing their exercises uh, at home regularly. And these insights help me to communicate with my patients in my clinical uh, work now. For example, when I give them tips based on my personal experience. Well, um, um, now I would like to conclude uh, to our take home messages and Isabella, I start with my take home message. Um, dear patient, have the courage to talk about your experiences on your patient pathway and don't be afraid of science because the scientists need you to develop tools which support us as patients. Thanks. Thank you, Roni. And my key message is that the PPI approach has forced me to reflect on my own role as a researcher, but in a positive way. And in particular, I reflect my own behavior, my communication style, and I'm more sensitive to the needs of the people involved in my project. So now we would like to thank you for your attention. And of course, we are looking forward to the keynote now. Thank you. Great, fantastic. Thank you very much indeed, Oni and Isabel, um, for sharing your uh, personal experiences in this sort of conversational format, uh, which I think will have given us a very nice um, warm up and introduction uh, in preparation of uh, Dr. Smith's keynote talk. 
we do have uh, a few minutes if there are any immediate questions relating to um, Isabel and uh, Veronica's talk. I don't see any questions in the Q&A chat. Um, please do type your questions in the Q&A chat and I will read them out from there. Um, in the meanwhile, um, oh, there is a question that just come in from an anonymous, um, from 